After studying this module, we shall be able to understand the meaning of directors, to know the different categories of directors, to know the legal position of directors in a company, to learn the different grounds for disqualification of a person to be appointed as director in a company, to learn the process of appointment of directors in the company, and to know the ways by which directors can be removed from their office. Directors are the persons appointed to direct and supervise the affairs of a company. Under Section 2, Subsection 34 of the Companies Act defines a director as any person appointed to the board of a company. Further, director means any person occupying the position of a director by whatever name called. Thus, a person will be deemed to be a director if he performs the functions of a director, though he may be named differently. The directors of a company are collectively referred to as board of directors or simply board. According to section 149, subsection 1 of the Act, every public company must have at least three directors. Every private company must have at least two directors and there must be at least one director in the case of one person company. The maximum number of directors a company can appoint is 15. However, a company can appoint more than 15 directors by passing a special resolution. Further, there must be at least one director in the company's board who has stayed in India for a total period of not less than 182 days in the previous year, which is the previous calendar year. The types of directors. These are shadow director, de facto director, first director, additional director, casual or ad hoc director, alternate director, executive and non-executive director, rotational director, women director, and independent directors. Shadow director. He is a director who is not formally appointed in a company, but exerts such an influence over the company's directors that other directors are accustomed to act in accordance with his instructions. He acts in the background and hides the fact that he is in control of the company. De facto director. He is also not formally appointed in a company or he may be a person who is disqualified to be appointed as director but discharges the function of a director despite a lack of authority and right to so act. First director. First directors are appointed by the promoters of the company immediately after the incorporation of the company. They are either named in the articles of the company or if articles are silent, the subscribers to the memorandum of association who are individuals become the first directors of the company. Additional directors. Such directors are appointed by the board of directors from time to time if so authorized by its articles of association. They hold office only up to the date of the next annual general meeting or the last date on which the AGM should have been held, whichever is earlier. Casual or ad hoc director. Casual directors are also appointed by the board of directors in case a vacancy arises in the office of the director due to death, resignation, insolvency, or the disqualification of a director. Such a director will hold office till the term of the original director. Alternate director. Such a director is appointed by the board 
in position of a director who remains absent from the state in which meetings of the board are ordinarily held for a period of more than three months. The article of association must contain the provision for the same. Such a director holds office till the expiry of the term of the original director or till he returns to the state. Executive and non-executive director. Executive directors are the directors who are also involved in the day-to-day -day management of the company. They are also termed as whole-time directors, for example, finance director, marketing director, etc. On the other hand, non-executive directors are the ones who are not involved in the day-to-day -day management of the company and do not hold any executive position within the company. They bring an independent voice and perspective to the board. Rotational Director These directors are subject to retire by rotation from the company's board. However, they may be reappointed after the retirement. Women Directors The following class of companies shall appoint at least one woman director as laid down by the company's Appointment and Qualification of Directors Rules 2014 every listed company, every other public company having paid up share capital of 100 crore rupees or more or turnover of 300 crore rupees or more. Independent Directors Section 149, subsection 4 provides that every listed public company shall have at least one third of the total number of directors as independent directors. Such directors shall not retire by rotation. They shall not be entitled to any remuneration other than sitting fees, reimbursement of expenses for participation in the board meeting, and profit-related commission approved by the members. The whole and sole purpose behind introducing the concept of independent directors is to take an unbiased decision and to check various decisions taken by the management and majority shareholders. They bring accountability and credibility to the board process and are the trustees of good corporate governance. The next topic is legal position of directors. Directors are the persons duly appointed by the company to direct and manage the affairs of the company. They are sometimes described as agents, trustees, employees, managing partners, and so on. But each of these expressions is used not as exhaustive of their powers and responsibilities, but as indicating useful points of view from which they may for the moment and for the particular purpose be considered. Directors as agents. Directors are viewed as agents of the company for the conduct of business of the company. A company cannot act by itself. It acts only through its directors. Directors act on behalf of the company and acting on behalf of the company make the company liable on it and not the directors. The directors cannot be held personally liable for any default of the company. Like agents, directors should conduct business of the company with care, skill and the diligence possessed by them. They are accountable for all of the company's assets under their control and the profits from assets of the company. They should not make any secret gains at the expense of the company. Directors as trustees. Directors are also described as trustees of the company as they stand in fiduciary capacity towards the company. However, they are not trustees in the legal sense as the rules applicable to trustees under the Trustees Act do not apply to the directors. But for the assets and properties of the company, in addition to being an agent, they also act as trustees. They must account for all the monies over which they exercise control. They must exercise their powers honestly in the interest of the company and all the shareholders and not their own sectional interest. The peculiar nature of their office is one of the reasons why the directors have been described as trustees. Directors as employees. A person holding the position of a managing director or a whole time director shall be in full time employment of the company and hence can be called an employee. Directors 
as managing partners. Directors represent the shareholders to conduct the business of the company on their behalf. They enjoy vast power of the management over the company and perform many functions which are in the nature of proprietary, allotment of shares, raising of loans and investment of funds of the company. This gives the impression of directors being the active partners and the shareholders appointing them as dormant partners. The very fact that most of the times directors themselves is the significant shareholders in the company strengthen the argument that directors are the managing partners of the company. But this may be true only partially as unlike partners, directors cannot bind other shareholders by their dealings. And dissimilar to partners, directors are elected and are subject to retirement also. In the real sense, the directors are neither the agents completely nor the trustees, employees or the managing partners. The position of directors combines all the four and more than that also. Directors are paid agents or officers of the company and conduct business for the company without being its legal owners. Disqualification of directors as per section 164 of the Companies Act 1956, a person shall not be eligible for appointment as a director of a company if he is of unsound mind and stands so declared by a competent court. Number two, he is an undischarged insolvent. Number three, he has applied to be adjudicated as an insolvent and his application is pending. Number four, he has been convicted by a court of any offense, whether involving moral turpitude or otherwise, and sentenced in respect thereof to imprisonment for not less than six months and a period of five years has not elapsed from the date of the expiry of such sentence, provided that if a person has been convicted of any offence and sentenced thereof to imprisonment for a period of seven years or more, he shall not be eligible to be appointed as director in any company. Six an order disqualifying him for an appointment as a director has been passed by a court or tribunal and the order is in force. 7. He has not paid any calls in respect of any shares of the company held by him whether alone or jointly with others and 6 months have elapsed from the last day fixed for the payment of such calls. 8. He has been convicted of the offence dealing with related party transactions under section 188 of the Act at any time during the last preceding 5 years. Number 9. He has not complied with the requirements of the DIN under section 152 subsection 3 of the act. Number 10. He has been a director of a company which has not filed financial statements or annual returns for any continuous period of 3 financial years or has failed to repay the deposits accepted by it or pay interest thereon or to redeem any debentures on the due date or pay interest due thereon 
or pay any dividend declared and such failure to pay or redeem continues for one year or more. The appointment of directors in a company can be made in a number of ways. Let us discuss them. Appointment of directors by promoters or first directors. The first directors of the company are usually appointed by the promoters in the manner laid down by the company's articles. Their names are usually given in the company's articles. Where the articles do not provide for the appointment of first directors, the signatories to the memorandum who are individual shall be deemed to be the first directors of the company subject to the regulations of the company's articles. The first directors can hold office only till the first annual general meeting of the company when they will be replaced by directors appointed by the company at this meeting. Appointment of directors by members. The subsequent directors in the case of a public company are appointed by the members of the company in the general meeting. Every person proposed to be appointed as a director by the company in the general meeting or otherwise shall furnish his director identification number and a declaration that he is not disqualified to become a director under this act. Further, a person appointed as a director shall not act as a director unless he gives his consent to hold the office as director and such consent has been filed with the registrar within 30 days of his appointment in such manner as may be prescribed. Appointment of Directors Retiring by Rotation Section 152 also provides that unless the articles provide for the retirement of all directors at every gen annual general meeting, at least two-thirds of the total number of directors of a public company shall be persons who shall be subject to retirement by rotation and must be appointed by the company in a general meeting. The remaining directors in the case of any such company and the directors of a private company may be appointed in accordance with the provisions of the company's articles. In the absence of any such provision in the articles or in case of default in so appointing directors, these directors shall also be appointed by the company in a general meeting. Therefore, the office of two-third of the total directors shall be subject to retirement by rotation in the general meeting of the company. These are called rotational directors. Any fraction in this two-third shall be rounded off as one. Now at every AGM, one-third of these rotational directors shall compulsorily retire by rotation. The turn for retirement shall be determined by the length of office of each director. Those who have been longest in office shall retire first. As between persons who become directors on the same day, retirement may be decided by lots. Appointment of Directors by Board The Board of Directors are authorized to make the following appointments. Additional or co-opted directors, other directors, alternate directors, casual or ad hoc directors. Additional or co-opted directors Section 161, subsection 1 provides that if authorized by the articles, the board of directors may appoint additional directors within the maximum strength of the board fixed by the articles of association. Such additional directors shall hold office only up to the commencement of the next annual general meeting. Casual or ad hoc directors. Section 161, subsection 4 provides that a casual vacancy occurring amongst the directors on account of death, resignation or otherwise may be filled up by the board of directors unless the articles provide a different procedure. The person so appointed shall hold office only up to the time his predecessor would have continued. Alternate Directors Section 161, subsection 2 provides that the Board of Directors may, if so authorized by the Articles of Association or by a resolution passed by the company in the general meeting, appoint an alternate director to act for a director during his absence for a period of not less than three months from the state in which meetings of the Board are ordinarily held. 
such a director will vacate office immediately on the return of the original director to the state. Such an alternate director will automatically vacate office on the expiry of the term of the original director, even if the latter has not returned. Other Directors Section 161, subsection 3 provides that subject to the articles of a company, the board may appoint any person as a director nominated by any institution in pursuance of the provisions of any law for the time being in force or of any agreement or by the central government or the state government by virtue of its shareholding in a government company. Appointment of Directors by the Tribunal Where an application is made to the Tribunal under Section 241 for relief against oppression and mismanagement of a company's affairs, the Tribunal may, if satisfied, order for the appointment of such number of persons as Directors who may be required to report to the Tribunal on such matters as the Tribunal may direct. The Tribunal may issue an order on a petition made to it by at least 100 members of the company or the members holding at least 10% of the voting rights in the company. The grounds on which such a petition can be filed is conduct of the affairs of the company in a manner oppressive to any member of the company or prejudicial to the interests of the company or public interest. Appointment of Directors by the Central Government Section 167, subsection 3 provides that where all the directors of a company vacate their offices under any of the disqualifications, the promoter or in his absence, the Central Government shall appoint the required number of directors who shall hold office till the directors are appointed by the company in the general meeting. The directors can be removed from office by the shareholders under Section 169, by the tribunal under Section 242, removal by shareholders. According to Section 169, a company may, by ordinary resolution, remove a director before the expiry of his period of office. A special notice shall be required to be given for moving a resolution to remove a director. On receipt of the notice of a resolution to remove a director under the section, the company shall forthwith send a copy thereof to the director concerned. The director shall be entitled to be heard on the resolution for his removal at the meeting. On the request of the director, the company shall send a copy of any representation made by the director in writing thereon to each of its members. In case the copies of the representation could not be sent to the members because it was received too late, the director concerned may be required to read it out at the meeting. The tribunal may not allow the representation to be sent out or read to the members if on an application of the company or any member it is satisfied that the rights conferred by law shall be abused by the director concerned in securing needless publicity for the defamatory matter. The vacancy created by the removal of a director may be filled at the same meeting in which the removal takes place, provided an earlier special notice to this effect has been given to the members together with the removal notice. The person so appointed will hold office up to the date to which his predecessor would have held it had he not been removed. If the vacancy is not filled at the meeting, it may be filled by the board as a casual vacancy. However, shareholders cannot remove the following directors. Director appointed by tribunal under Section 242. Director elected by proportional representation under Section 163. Director appointed by central government 
under IDRA Act 1951, Director Holding Office for Life on the first day of April 1952 in the case of a private company, a director appointed by the financial institution as nominee director. Removal by tribunal as per section 242 where an application has been made to the tribunal under section 241 against oppression and mismanagement of a company's affairs, the tribunal may, if satisfied, order for the termination or setting aside of an agreement which the company might have made with its directors. The effect of such an order will be the removal of such director or directors from his or their office. Further, the tribunal may also order the manner in which the managing director, manager or any of the directors of the company may be appointed subsequent to an order removing the existing managing director or manager or director of the company. Such a director, including the managing director, shall not be entitled to serve as a manager, managing director or director of any company without the sanction of the company law board for a period of five years from the date of the tribunal's order terminating or setting aside his contract with the company. Further, he cannot claim any compensation for the termination of his appointment. Let us now recapitulate what we have learned in this module. Directors are the persons appointed to direct and supervise the affairs of a company. The directors of a company are collectively referred to as board of directors or directors. Independent directors bring accountability and credibility to the board process and are the trustees of good corporate governance. Section 149 subsection 4 of the Act provides that every listed public company shall have at least one third of the total number of directors as independent directors. Directors are paid agents or officers of the company and conduct business for the company without being the legal owners. Section 164 of the Act contains certain grounds which make a person disqualified to be appointed as a director of a company. The directors can be appointed in company by the promoters, shareholders, board of directors, central government and the tribunal. The directors of a company can be removed by the shareholders and the tribunal.